Ahoy, welcome aboard, Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, the War for Independence. We were given a letter of mark to indiscriminately attack British shipping, and we put that to good use, adding another brig to our fleet. We have a second mission, the Meal for Patriots. We've suffered heavy casualties, advances are slow because we have no supplies and we must forage for everything before winter. We've been ordered to escort a large merchant vessel loaded with food and warm clothes and gunpowder to resupply the column. These supplies are hard to come by and we must keep them intact. Well, we can certainly do that. The date is the 28th of November, 1775. We have the victory, the vengeance, and the valor. The three seventh-rate brigs, and it looks like we have an Indiaman. Powerful ships, despite being a trader. The East Indiaman. Some of them were armed, some of them were not. I hope we've got an armed one. It was dark when the Minerva spotted the enemy ships coming in hard. We must protect the merchant vessel and its vital cargo at all costs. Fortunately, she is an Indiaman and can protect herself. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if she's an armed Indiaman, she will have 10 or 12 pounder guns. And it looks like we have actually quite a substantial force coming to intercept her. So, we'll have a look at what ships we are facing in a moment. Speeding time up. Looks like we have a brig or a cutter coming in pretty fast. We'll turn Minerva around. The wind is not in our favor. The enemy are upwind of us. And so we are going to suffer from range penalties. Unless we drop the sails and come to a full stop. We'll raise the sails, rather. Okay, we're just going to swing the brigs around. We're not going to go face on. It looks like they might be a sixth rate. And a corvette. Which I think are both sixth rates. By British standards. Stopping up the manoeuvre, we're going to open up fire on this cutter. Or a sloop. Vengeance taking first shots. Her crew are the most experienced that we have. We are turning the difficulty up for every mission, so most of the ships we face will have high, high crew levels. Or experienced crews. And that will give us more rewards at the end. But it does make the, the fighting a little bit harder. Come closer. I want to see what these guns do. How big are they? Slow to fire. Pretty slim profiles. Pretty hard to hit. No, no contact there, unfortunately. We'll get her underway. We don't want to sit her there. Flat-footed. We'll bring the Vengeance around so she can fire her starboard guns. Let's have another shot with the Minerva. The enemy ships are fighting against the wind, so we have a little bit of time before they get there. We can just pick this one apart. She's dodging and weaving through the cannon shot. Minerva's going to have another go. She's taken hits, but from victory, rather, than the guys that have been shooting at her for two minutes. Vengeance finally getting some solid contact through the bow. This guy is going to be encircled if they're not careful. We have full broadside now with Minerva. Oh, those are big hits. Some crew shock happening. Brutalize the planking on the on the starboard side of that boat. HMS Catherine is the next one we're facing. 140 crew. Looks to be a 6th rate. HMS Cruiser is taking a battering from Minerva. This is... The, I'm going to have to use Minerva, I think. I don't know if three brigs can take on those two ships without just blindly rushing in to board them. 
They have pretty high crew levels. HMS Cruiser is wavering under that sustained fire from the circle of ships. She's going to try and make a break for it. At least getting out of Minerva's gun sights. Coming around astern. Looks like she's going to swing up us on the starboard side. She turned too sharply. She almost fell out of Minerva's gun sights. That sustained turn bringing her back in. I might just shoot her into submission. I don't want to board her just yet. If we can take her as a prize, we will. But those other two ships are going to be our new additions. Minerva doesn't have the highest crew level, so we can't afford for the, to let them board. But if we run past with the wind behind us, they won't be able to swing around for a boarding, I don't think. We should be able to get a couple of solid broadsides in. And then we will swarm them with the brigs as they try to react. HMS Catherine is trying to bring her port side guns around. Like I said before, they do have a benefit of increased range. So if she wants to turn across the wind like that, she may get... Nope, she's going back to port. Vengeance has taken a shot to the stern. HMS Cruiser, who's proving to be quite stubborn under sustained fire. We will let Victory deal with the, the smaller ship. Yeah, boarding up now. Just going to silence her. Quickly battering that crew into submission. They should surrender any moment. Nerva, we're going to get really close. I don't want any of these large guns to miss. And then we were going to move as far away as we can. I'm hoping that we can do enough to these two ships as we swing by. We've got a Porcupine class Corvette. And that looks like another Corvette behind it, but a much heavier one. HMS Cruiser has capitulated. Sending a crew across. Minimum crew. And we will just get her off the battlefield. We want to keep as many crew aboard Victory as we can. Oh, big hits there on HMS Catherine. Let's bring Minerva through the center because the Sherwood seems to be a very slow ship. And they are running against the wind. So we're going to have enough time to slip through the middle, I think. Bit of a stutter. Got it back on track. HMS Cruiser, get off the field, please. Victory, bring her around and join, join the swarm. See if we can make a line of ships that rivals the one I had in the British campaign. I don't know if that will be a possible. Alright, switching to Grape Shot. Let's start stripping down the crew. Now, Vengeance is in a bit of a dire situation here. Let's wiggle her around a bit. But if Minerva keeps those big guns firing, this shouldn't take too long. Vengeance has taken a brutal shot through the bow from the Sherwood. Catherine sending grape shot her way. She's not in a great position, but if we can get behind the Sherwood, we should be fine. Minerva's lost 10% of her crew. Close range musket fire. I don't think it's wise to board. No way. Not with a wavering crew against a ship with a larger crew. Let's sit in behind the stern. Shoot some in there. Raking fire. The next shots will be the best. Now Valor is going to have to run the gauntlet the same way Vengeance did. Victory will be there in about a minute. It's a pretty aggressive play what I'm doing here. Running bow on into these ships is not 
super smart, but if we can do it quickly... We want to get a double boarding action on the Sherwood, I think. She's got a lot of crew. Minerva can swing around and start throwing some grape shot in. We'll hold fire until she has a better angle. Oh, those first shots weren't great. Catherine's running away, so she's she's trying to come about, and that's going to leave the Sherwood in a dire situation. Surrounded on both sides, we're going to whittle her crew away enough, I think. We've thrown the lines with the Vengeance. Thrown the lines with Valor. I think Sherwood's trying to board Valor. But she's going to get taken from the other side as well. As long as Vengeance doesn't collapse. She just took a brutal shot, I think, from Minerva through the ship. Wasn't watching too much. All right, so we have more, but most of our crews are wavering. Everyone's wavering. Everyone's panicking. But the Sherwood is going down. She's going to be ours. Be a new Corvette for the fleet. I don't know if we could have done this without Minerva. Minerva really battered those two guys as we came through. Not sure we would have had the firepower to put them on the back foot. So I'm glad I used her as such. Let's try and get some into the stern. Round shot, please. Slow down to increase the range. Now we just have to shoot Catherine into submission. Let's go minimum crew as well for the Sherwood. I don't want to use her as a fighter just yet. Next mission, we'll use her power. She's a bit slow, so they'll have to take that into consideration. And if we fill her with men, she'll be a great boarding ship, but a bit on the slow side. Whereas if we can take Catherine, she seems to be a much faster Corvette. Lighter and faster. Slightly lower guns. Sherwood has, what, 30 guns? 25 at the moment. She's got 28 guns. She's lost three. Which is a big upgrade from our Briggs, which only have nine aside. Of the seventh rates, we've got probably the lighter, lightest of those seventh rates. The armed sloops and that have much more guns. Catherine is going to try and board Minerva. But if we keep up this grape shot, she's just going to surrender. If she wasn't wavering, I'd actually be concerned. But if we get another big solid shot in and then bring Vengeance up on the port side as she tries to board... Oh, no, she's turned, she's turned away to starboard. She gave up. That attempt, she's trying to bring her port guns in. Vengeance taking more fire. It's been our tank ship. Oh, HMS Catherine's now on fire in the stern. We need to board her and capture her and put that fire out before it explodes. But we also risk setting our ships on fire. Let's use the Valor. Valor's in a better position. Oh, Victory's already thrown her line. She doesn't care. That's going to make it a bit difficult for Valor to get around. We're just going to have to put her there for fire support. Victory has more crew, so she's probably better off boarding. But they are connected at the fiery bit. Which is not great. Just surrender so we can put the fire out, guys. We've got you dead to rights. Throw your colours. Vengeance and Minerva are heading off into the north northeast exit. Oh, they're surrendering. Are they? No, still fighting. Fortunately, Victory has not caught fire, which is a good thing. Despite the fire raging in the stern section of the Catherine. 
Surrender. Now. There we go. Victory for the Continental Navy. That's a big upgrade. We need that, I think. I think it's going to get very hard if we don't have the fleet ready. Success. We did outgun them. Managing to capture some weapons as well. But the prizes, the Sherwood and the Catherine, exactly what we needed. Thomas Jefferson refuses to elaborate. <laughs> okay. What have we got here? The Sherwood. 28 gun, 6th rate Cerberus class and a 6th rate Porcupine class, which is a 30 gunner. Slightly lighter, faster and better armed. Apparently, she's got two gun decks, that's why. Whereas the uh, the Cerberus has a full 9 pounder gun deck. Very interesting. Should be a decent boarding ship, but just, I have to do something about the speed. 9.5 knots, only half loaded. 15 reputation, that's pretty expensive as well. Let's add her to the fleet. We can't say no to that. And we need the Catherine as well. Ideally, I'd want two Porcupines or two... Two Sherwoods. Two Cerberus. Hmm. Very nice. Good job to the 7th rate Brig Fleet. Victory, Vengeance and Valor. We're going to move our experienced crew across to those ships. We're going to strip them down. And in the next episode, we'll have a think about what our fleet composition is going to be. I might have enough to buy another 6th rate. And if that becomes an option, we'll do it. Let's have a look at how the crew look once they're aboard their new ships. Which one will be the flagship? The Sherwood or the Catherine? 200 crew and we're fully loaded. Ooh. She's going to need lightweight gun carriages. Yeah. Definitely going to need those. Eight knots. It's not very fast. Whereas the Victory, Vengeance, and Valor unloaded are like 14 knots. Strip them out too. All right, Sherwood. Let's get our men aboard. Constant Allen, will you be the CO? Yeah, all the CO. Best officers are out. All right, the Catherine is going to have our best CO. And I believe that's... See, John Paul Jones doesn't have very good skills yet. He's very low ranked. He's, he's the protagonist of this campaign. But there are more proficient men available for the job of CO. Yeah, Constant Allen is a great XO. And John Paul Jones can be under their stewardship. And we're overloaded at 227 men. I like to have slightly more than optimal for combat losses and for boarding. And we don't quite have enough to give them the best weaponry available. I ne did not have any of these issues with the British campaign. It was just... You need stuff for war, mate. Then here you go. And we were just absolutely robbing the Spaniards of all their best stuff. The treasure galleons and all that sort of stuff. Harrison, Constant Allen, you will be there. I forgot to save it. Sorry, guys. Same order as before. We want that gunnery and boarding to be fairly high. I'm going to go with morale for the flagship, I think. Sherwood. They will be shooting a lot once they're in range. And they're just going to have the standard Charleville rifle and bayonet. We don't have... We don't have the supplies. 
Catherine doesn't have as many officers aboard, so that's why John Paul Jones is on the other ship. We only have 140 men that are experienced, so this ship is also going to need fresh recruits. And they are fully overloaded, just over optimal as well, so they'll have a light gun carriage set up. That will let us squeeze a few more men aboard. We'll go with Tyler's for these guys as well. I did commit to that. Oh, we're a few guns short of being... So let's drop the man count down and we'll take the best sword bayonets that we can. She's a faster ship. Keep that in mind. She might run really well with the brigs. I also have to keep in mind, I can't expand the fleet too much because we have to pay maintenance on all the men, all the ships. And MZ Allen, excellent perception for gunnery. Start training up some new crews, new officers with our, our brigs. And what can you take? Hmm. Let's just take the Charleville rifles as well, and then we'll put minimum crew on these two ships later on. All right, so that was successful. We've already spent the rewards. Let's go and spend our career points on cash post-battle. Because we're just going to be scrounging in the early stages, I feel, which is law accurate. Only sloops and cutters for sale. We've got a couple of side missions and then we're on to the next mission. The next chapter. Make sure you tune in next time as we continue the war for independence and we head on into chapter 3 of Ultimate Admirals. Commander Tyrell, out.